Hey, everyone. My name is Reverend Jennifer Kleitz, and I am part of the Unity of Las Cruces ministerial team, and we are so happy to have you with us. Welcome to the Unity of Las Cruces Sunday service celebration, where God is good all the time, and all are welcome, safe, and loved. Please pardon the dogs in the background. I am dog sitting and I'm not able to let them outside because it's so windy, but that just adds more love to the service. It is my honor to introduce Reverend Helen Wright for today's spiritual reading. And thank you. So our theme as we're now in March, our theme from unity is get healthy. So we're looking at wellness, we're looking at physical, physical health and what, what being whole and healthy means. So I chose a very short inspirational reading from Edgar Cayce. It's Edgar Cayce's reading 281-24. Uh, it was actually for Friday, February 11th, and it reads, as the body physical is purified, as the mental body is made holy, at one with purification or purity, with the life and the light within itself, healing comes, strength comes, power comes. And so it is. Thank you, Reverend Helen. Thank you so very much. <clears throat> and today's speaker will be Reverend Helen Wright, talking about health for this month's theme and we are grateful and our meditation and guide uh, will also be reverend helen today's music will be barry shaw and max Contreras. and now for the good news all right good morning everybody i've got a wonderful tidbit of information that I got from Reverend Helen. It's a really great thing. And let me bring the slide up so you can all see what I'm going to be referring to. With all the fun stuff that's going, and I, I use it in a sarcastic manner over in Ukraine, there was a really neat article that uh, was put together by CNN. And it's about a group of elementary school students. They found a thoughtful way to comfort their creative art teacher who is mourning the war in Ukraine. And they put together a great wall of sunflowers. You can see that in the picture in the background there. And the idea was cooked up by the local cafeteria lady at a Peavley Elementary. And I don't know, don't know exactly where it is, but it's a really great idea to demonstrate the love that the students have for their, their teachers out there. It's really great. And they didn't know what, what was going on over in Ukraine, but they felt that they need, their teacher needed a little bit of love. So they put together this great a wall demonstration and you can see the teacher there in the picture and she's really enjoying it to this time. If you go into CNN and look for their good stuff, you can get a little bit more, bit more information about it. But I thought it was a really neat thing to show that out there, the little kids are, you know, helping the adults in some cases more often than the adults are helping the adults. So, all right, back to you. Thank you, Ken. Thank you so much. My notes. All right, and uh, I apologize. I lost my notes. Okay, and now for some moments of gratitude. We at Unity of Las Cruces are so grateful for all the people who participate in the background and behind the scenes, and those of you who attend and watch via YouTube. <clears throat> Our prayer chaplaincy, the New Thought Prayer Team, the Unity of Las Cruces Board of Trustees, our social media outreach with Jane Ray, helpers and donors who help get uh, the things from the barrels at the center to the places where they will do the most good and those who come and contribute to those barrels. Anonymous prayers, our musicians, our speakers, our Zoom, YouTube, and email producer, Ken Warner, and all the things he does in the background that we don't even know about, and our ministry team. 
We are so grateful. Thank you for raising the vibrations of the universe through your prayers, affirmations, and visualizations, for allowing the love, light, and healing to throw through you all. And now our opening prayer with Kay Brilliant. Good morning. Please join me in the silence. We'll take a second here today to acknowledge that fear and discord have no power in my life. And I know that we do the prayer for protection at the end of the service, but I will be sending it out with a few word changes. Join me if you wish. The light of God surrounds you the love of God enfolds you. The power of God protects you. And the presence of God watches over you. Wherever you are, God is. I take that affirmation as I see things or I hear things that create discord in my truth. Wherever you are, God is wherever I am. God is. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Kay. Next, our daily word reading with Dave Aidy. Good morning, Unity friends. Our daily word for this Sunday, March 6th, is glory. Our affirmation, my life celebrates the glory of God. Glory fills the world with wonder. When I attune my senses to it, I hear it in the sound of waves crashing on a beach and in the resonant harmony of a choir. I see it in sunrises and sunsets, in the beauty of gardens, mountains, and forests, and in the eyes of parents holding their newborn child. I feel glory in the depths of my being at those moments when I understand my life as God's life, living as me. There is no place where my human self ends and the divine presence in me begins. God and I are one. The glory of God is revealed in me as I release the thought that I am only human. God's glory shines through me as the divine presence, the Christ, expressing in my healthy body, my insightful mind, and my loving heart. And from Scripture, Galatians 2, verse 20. And it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. Will you state the affirmation with me, please? My life celebrates the glory of God. And so it is. Amen. Thank you very much, Dave. Next, we'll have our prosperity affirmation with Reverend Tanya Dawson. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, all that I receive, and I am grateful. Thank you, Reverend Tanya. And now for our speaker for today. I am pleased to introduce Reverend Helen Wright speaking 
on Be Well. Reverend Helen is starting out the month, and I so look forward to the words she shares as she starts out our month on the topics and the themes, and she has a wonderful way of, of showing us so many perspectives about the monthly topic that the rest of the speakers for the month can take those and expand on them. I'm so grateful for her leading each month uh, with her speaking. Reverend Helen. Thank you so much for that introduction. And I truly hope that uh, I can live up to the vibration of, of setting the tone, setting the tone for the whole month in terms of being well, being healthy. Uh, I have to start by saying I argued a little bit, which I like to do from time to time with with unity um, and the um, theme for the month, I'm going, why is it get healthy? Why isn't it be healthy? You know, get implies something in the future and I'm wanting to be here right now, in the present right now and being that wellness, being that health, that divine health expressing. So really I want to look at how do we do express our divine self, that divine template within each of us. And we're going to be hearing quite a lot about Myrtle today. Um, I'm really referring a lot to uh, one of my favorite books of Myrtle. So Myrtle and her healing letters and the inspiration that comes through that. Um, just one, what I call, might say a chapter, is, actually, is often one full letter that she wrote in response to people writing in requesting healing. And we'll hear a little bit more about that uh, in a little while. And it's also Lent, we've entered into Lent, a very significant time in the, the calendar. And I always had uh, these ideas about Lent that, you know, again, my little argumentative self comes out. Why do I have to give up chocolate for Lent? Or why do I have to give up something I really, really love for Lent? And the more I learn about unity, the more I love to embrace this idea that I'm releasing something that no longer serves. And Lent is a good time, um, you know, 40 days of practicing, of just releasing the non-serving energy, but then bringing forth and lifting up and raising up the, the new vibrational energy or the new that replaces that that I release. So our, uh, our booklet that maybe you've seen, and I'm hoping that you can um, access if you want, is Release and Renew in 2022 and so it's a practice a spiritual practice of how we can use lent and like the christmas calendar it has a sort of some daily releasing that we can be part of so in that in was in that context this this thought about rather than penance or being punished in lent you know having to do something that i really don't want to do or give up something that really feels good to me um, I like this, this, this that came from Edgar Cayce, this idea of the body physical being purified and the mental body is made holy at one and pur with purification or purity, with the life and light within itself and that that healing comes and strength comes and that power comes. And there's another, um, there's another quote from Edgar Cayce and this was the reading of 1967-1. And this was, know that all strength, all healing of every nature is the changing of the vibrations from within. The attuning of the divine within the living tissue of a body to create energies. This alone is healing. Whether it is accomplished by the use of drugs, the knife or whatnot, it is the attuning of the atomic structure of the living cellular force to its spiritual heritage. And um, in, in a moment, Myrtle Fillmore, co-founder co of Unity in her book, Healing Letters, chapter 12 is really significant. It's talking about threefold healing and address, addresses the concept of healing and the vibration or frequency involved in healing. But first I'm gonna share a story. Um, we're going to be channeling Myrtle, I think. And I was channeling Myrtle 
uh, a few weeks back when I went to the eye doctor. So you, you may know of Myrtle's view when she, after her healing experience, she had a view with respect to doctors or, or anyone that uh, her own healing was inherent because she's a child of God. She would say, I'm a child of God, therefore I do not inherit sickness. So this whole concept of when we fully connect to the I am presence, the Christ presence within, that divinity within, we are then expressing a form of prosperity in the form of health, perfect health, divine health. So going, going back to my story, when I first had the amusing thought that I might be channeling Myrtle, um, I'd seen an eye doctor and he really didn't have very much complimentary to say about my prognosis, my vision, my eyes, short, near vision, far vision. And so it's given me a lot to think about metaphysically. But while I was listening to him just talking about this, in my opinion, rather negative viewpoint, um, Myrtle came through. And without ego, I was amused at my own thought of, does he know who he's talking to? I'm a child of God. He's saying this to me, a child of God. And it, it really sort of um, protected me from going down that negative spiral of believing everything a physician may say. So, um, Yes, I'm, I'm very willing to be open to the consultation, their opinion, their education. And yes, I know also that I am a divine being and that spontaneous healing is possible and even probable when we have our prayer practice and our spiritual practice, that spontaneous healing can happen in the moment, right now. So going back to Myrtle, um, she writes, this was in response to a letter, and you'll hear the two statements that she quotes from the letter. And so she's writing back to the person, the persons who are asking for healing. And she writes, two of your statements prompt us to a little explanation before giving the outline for treatment. One, I am wondering if you will send me, my, also my brother, some health vibrations. The second statement is two, we are asking you to relieve us through the silent unity healing. And Myrtle says, we're not sure that you understand that you are to cooperate with us by studying the truth so that you may come into the understanding of the divine laws of, of health and life and prosperity and by joining us in daily prayers. So she's clearly saying, you know, part of their role at silent unity or her role is to help other students seek truth and therefore make this connection for themselves. She says, we will not say that the work we do here has nothing to do with healing, but we do not promise results unless we have the faith and the cooperation of those for whom we pray, to whom we give instruction. After all, it is not the physical and mental relief that means most to the persons receiving treatment. And we are not so much concerned with the results as we are with the growth in consciousness that will make the results abiding. So we're looking at consciousness. She's, she's looking at teaching and truth to lift the consciousness of each and every one that is writing in and asking for healing. And she goes on to say that the health law is threefold. Spiritual, keeping a person assured of his God-given freedom from all anxiety, worry, fear, and lack. Mental, giving him the intelligence that enables him to do that which promotes health and success. And physical, forming those habits which keep him making the right use of his faculties and powers and the life energy and substance. And she really stresses the importance of these three elements that we need to look at these consciously every day and consciously bring these into a, a unified state that we're not focusing all on, like it's easy to do at the beginning of the year. Oh, I've got to go to the gym. I've got to get walking. I've got to go dieting. Uh, she's really clearly saying that we need all three on a daily basis in an in integrated whole. And she's talking about the application of these truth principles. She goes on to say, one who remembers and lives by the spiritual promises of the law of health will not worry or seek to manage other people's affairs or neglect to feed his or her soul with that which is necessary to keep it unfolding Christward. 
And she talks about the mental side of health and this freedom that we get, freedom from race mind, freedom from the opinions and demands of others, freedom from depressions and hurried attitudes that, that, that may separate us from that Christ idea. She talks about a physical life, um, which brings forth peace and order of spiritual rea reality and divine intelligence uh, in the body. And she really has this concept that we know about that every cell in our body is divine. Every cell has divine intelligence. And the body, when we can trust its innate intelligence, its divine intelligence, always seeks to come back into wholeness, to come back into balance, and to come back into perfect health. Myrtle then, then responds to the writer saying, so you see there is more to our silent unity ministry than a formula of words to be said at intervals. We want to help you live the Christ life here and now, which means, means to live a life of understanding, trust in the good, of joyous activity, mental and physical, of freedom from fear and worry, of loving contact with your fellows without anxiety as to their apparent shortcomings or selfishness. So we ask you to consider prayerfully the following explanation of your being to seek and incorporate an understanding of your consciousness using it in your daily life. So even though I don't think Myrtle would have said, ah, we're doing the unity principle number five, we live it. She's talking about embodying it, living it, being threefold in spirit, soul, and body, and finding our expression through this threefold harmonious, um, un unified consciousness of integration. She really stresses this joyous, radiant health, and is that being the result of a, the right spiritual viewpoint. And I'm doing a little uh, sidetrack here that every time we sing our peace song, there are some people who sing the original words um, and talk about our solemn vow, and there are some who, who sing that with joyous vow. It, in one sense, makes a lot of sense to be joyous as we make our vows of peace, to be the peace we want to be. And sometimes I walk a fine line between the two of them and I say sacred vow, because I think solemn is meant to be, rather than serious, solemn is meant to be a sacred vow a vow that we commit to. So I just love her idea of this joyousness helps to bring us into, into a state where that spontaneous healing is possible and probable with faith. She does get quite, she has quite strong opinions at times and she says weakness or sickness or inharmony or imperfection in the organism is the result of a failure to identify oneself with God the divine source and understanding how to lay hold of and express one's inheritance of spiritual powers, some limitation of the soul's development of its riches, some ignorance of the body's requirement and disregard of the divine law in life and health. So it's really quite firmly saying that we need to, uh, uh, we need to know truth, we need to follow truth, and we need to be a student of truth, and we, know, we need to know always, as in our opening prayer, we are one with the divine. We are one with God. And she has a lot of very valuable advice about how to discern what the body might want, um, uh, declaring that our spiritual life and world and declaring our physical life, that all is unified harmoniously with the ideas of the Christ mind. And I've left quite a lot out. I've, we're leaving the reference to this whole chapter is in the um, YouTube. I will be in the YouTube after this um, live, live Zoom. Um, so she has such an incredible depth of her own metaphysical knowledge and studies that she shares with everyone in her responses. And, and she concludes this uh, talk about saying, the realm of mind is even more fascinating than the manifestation of its ideas one who strikes a balance between the study of the mental side and the manifestations and in the living of his her threefold being is truly blessed he is free and joyous and can keep healthy and prosperous the past does not worry him her the past the 
The past does not worry him. The future does not entice him. He knows that the full measure of good is his here and now. He profits by the past, glories in the now, and is fearlessly looking forward to the future. So stirring words from Myrtle. And there is incredible wealth of, of her sharing of, of her own experience of becoming healthy, of her own experience of healing her physical body. And she, she always affirms the power of prayer, affirms the power of right mind, of spiritual practice. So going back to that very important uh, occurrence that Myrtle had been told she was a sickly, sickly child. She'd always been a sickly child. She always would be sickly and she was a sick, sickly adult. And then doctors with her tuberculosis had said that she, um, she had only a relatively short time to live. Then she attended the New Thought Lecture in 1886 and she heard these words and she came away um, with this statement that totally changed her life. It was a lived in her body statement. I am a child of God and therefore I do not inherit sickness. And there's a story, the story of unity is a book written by James Dillett Freeman. And he says that in one hour, Myrtle Fillmore's whole outlook toward herself and her life had been changed like a revelation. This simple and divine idea that she was a beloved child of God and that God's will for her could only be a perfect life and wholeness. It filled her mind and possessed her be being. And so incorporating our theme for this Lent, release and renew, she released that old belief, that belief that she was an invalid, that, that she'd always been an invalid, she was born an invalid. And she released that whole expectation that was from her doctors and everything that tuberculosis tuberculosis could not be healed. So that was her release. And her renewal was this uh, beyond knowledge, beyond belief, this embodiment of being a child of God. And a child of God does not get sick. So um, one of our uh, Unity pe people at Worldwide Ministries, I believe, um, wrote her an article and the reference to the article has gone into hiding and here it is. It's seven way, ways to heal yourself. And she's based this on, on Myrtle's book of healing letters. And it's by Angie Olson. Um, so what she, she writes is that the lessons from Myrtle and from all of this reading is that, um, okay, Ken, could we have the second slide? since I forgot the first slide entirely. So the second slide, this is by Angie Olson, and she, she writes that uh, the seven key elements of what Myrtle is teaching, and one of them is to unite all the areas of your life. That came very, through very clearly in her letter, that the three realms uh, must be addressed for healing to occur. And she says, daily declare that your spiritual life and world, your mental life and world, and your physical life and world are unified, and that you're expressing harmoniously the ideas of the Christ mind on all these three planes. And I would, I would sort of say another word, in all areas of our consciousness, we need this three-fold three unified approach. Secondly, have immense faith that you can be healed. Step out in faith. Um, when she was asked one time, Myrtle, when she was asked one time what restored her vigorous health, Myrtle stated, it was a change of mind from the old carnal mind that believes in sickness to the Christ mind of life and permanent health. I applied spiritual laws effectively, blessing my body temple until it manifested the innate health of spirit. So be transformed by this change of mind this change of mind that's so profound that it has this abiding state of health and peace and well-being. The third one was turning inward. 
And she really, we know this as unity teachings, Myrtle taught that God is inside each person, the divine is within. And sometimes we pray to a God that's outside of ourself, but it's the God in the midst of us that frees and heals. She says, you need to think of God as the all powerful healer, as being already within you in every part of your mind, heart and body. And later we will hear a little music that I love. And, and one way to, to go within, we can go within in our meditation practice, we can go within in prayer. And then sometimes I like to be just silly, silly, uh, joyful, giddy, and sing very, very loudly when I might need it. Every little cell in my body is happy. Every little cell in my body is well. Every little cell in my body is happy. Every little cell in my body is well. And I have a new verse. I'm so happy. I'm so fine. Every little cell in my body is divine. And that really lifts my energy um, in times that I need it um, to help and know and turn within and know that that divine is within. Um, and she also writes, the next one is be optimistic, but really holding a positive thoughts, replacing old ways of thinking. It quickens the healing process. And Myrtle would say that prayer is an exercise to change our thought habits and our living habits. When some of our thought energy is expended in negative beliefs and feelings, we get those old negative results. So we're looking at a affirmative, positive statements. And what we focus on, what's held in mind, in, we know in unity, what's held in mind produces in kind. So the more we hold those thoughts of healing, of perfect health, the more that is able to manifest. Now, the next one is my favorite, especially at this time. It says rest every day. I went, oh, good. Oh, yay. Afternoon nap. Here I come. Uh, and it's really talking again about a, a rest or a pause, that rest and rejuvenation is essential to feed the soul. And a period of, of quiet and rest each day is the opportunity to establish ourselves at the center of our being. And, the, and in that place where the supply of life and substance is in, inexhaustible. So I love this, this treatment prescription this opportunity rest every day but rest spiritually and go within into the silence rest mentally and help st stop the chitter chatter in our monkey mind rest emotionally and and pay attention to our emotions and also the physical rest that the body may need So the, the next one, taking care of your body. It sounds like St. Francis again, the, who wished that he had taken better care of his body. So maintaining a healthy lifestyle is important. Eating right, healthy foods, exercising, resting. Um, but the body truly can take this to a deeper level when we embody this taking care of our body, acknowledging our body as the body temple and knowing that by changing our mind, changing our habits, we can renew um, and make, make new and make whole our body temple, moment by moment. Myrtle also believed that we needed to bless our body and she blessed her body through her whole healing process. I remember her words saying that if at first it seems that an organ is slow to respond, don't give up, have patience encourage it and it's like encouraging a small child in encouraging each part of the body to to move into that elevated state of frequency of vibration where each cell of the body is expressing its divinity and wholeness and perfection so i like the fact that she's she is, is really asking us to to discern what is right for each individual body and we had a, a bit of a conversation just before the service started about permission giving ourselves permission and i love that because in the process of discernment i usually choose to be vegan now um, but sometimes the body 
wants something more, especially in protein. So I listen to the body. Um, so I, I give myself permission if the body really wants fish occasionally, so be it. If the body wants cheese, which it sometimes does, then my logical mind says, oh, I can't stand how, how, how cheese is manufactured and the cows and the treatment and all of this. And my body's going, I want food, I want cheese, I want protein. And we're like, okay. So really tuning in, even though we may be trying to have other aspirations, just tuning into the body. So I am, um, as I say, I invite us all to use the renew, release and renewal practice here. And there's so many examples. Um, there's so many, there's a list of everything we might want to release. Um, I release any belief in limitation. I renew my sense of possibility. I release any apathy or boredom. I renew my zeal and enthusiasm. I release any drama or conflict. I renew my inner peace in spirit. So I invite everyone, myself included, to, to look at these lists of, of releasing and renewals and then fine tune it to what our own individual body may need on any particular level. Fine tune and see what this body, my body, your body, our body wants to release. And, and I found, uh, um, my, I had an experience a couple of weeks ago, which, which led me into um, knowing that as we release, we may have to go through the layers of the onion. There was a relatively small incident a couple of weeks ago. I was in a car, someone else was driving, we, we were towing a trailer, and the winds were like today. No, they weren't, they were stronger than today. And we were on the interstate and we ended up in the median. Not my favorite place when you think you're driving on the interstate. Um, and, and everything was kept safe. Everything was blessed. It was like the angels were surrounding. There was no cause, no damage to any vehicle, no damage to us, no damage to the load that we kind of lost with the wind that we had to repack and put back in the trailer. And I thought, why everything is fine? I am safe. My body kept saying it wasn't, but I kept saying, we are safe. We, the cells of my body are safe. And then I found out that it had triggered a memory of back when I was in my early twenties, I just passed my test for dri to drive a car. I didn't choose to do that at 16. I was on the motorway in the UK in strong wind. And there was a vehicle behind me pushing me to go faster. And I changed lanes too fast, spun around and ended up on the shoulder facing the opposite direction. And I thought, aha. So it, it brought back a memory that needed healing. It's like these things that come up for healing. It was something, the fear, the event around the former experience in my twenties, not the current one, but the current one was a window or a portal to healing something that had gone on in the past. So when we do this healing work, there may be things that we come up for forgiveness and for release, which is, in our benefit because it brings forth uh, a better ability to demonstrate the Christ presence from me, from each one of us. So if we could have the next slide as we just prepare for a short meditation. As we take a moment and settle in and follow our breathing, we become fully present to this moment. Fully present to wherever our feet may be, may be connected with the ground and with the earth. Our spine elongated, if we can do that, if that's possible in this moment. And as we breathe in, we can breathe in healing energies coming from the earth and up our feet and ankles and legs, up into our knees, our thighs, our hip region healing energies, it may be in the form of colors or aromas or, or feeling sense in each different area of the body as we allow that healing energy to flow up from the earth till it reaches our heart chakra. And we rest in our heart chakra, breathing in this healing energy and breathing out the love and light to the rest of our body. 
As we do this, we become aware that there is healing energies flowing in through our crown chakra and beyond. Healing powers of spirit, of the divine love, divine healing, divine perfection, divine ideas flowing as healing light energy into our body. Coming to our heart chakra and melding and mingling and merging with all of the energy from the earth energy. As we feel this continual flow of energies from above and from below and from all around in our heart center, we begin to feel a light, a love, a compassion, a deep peace. And this light flows out into our whole body, touching every cell of our body. Every cell of our body that is divine is touched by this healing energy from the earth, from spirit. And we feel that igniting the light, that divine light, as it, that divine light flows into our arms, our leg, our head, our eyes, our ears, flowing into every organ within our body and every cell in our body is now radiant with the power of love and light and life. And as we just sit just for a moment in the silence, appreciating these energies of light, of divine perfection, of health and healing in every cell of our bodies. And we return to our present state awareness, knowing that we can return into this place of light, of golden light, this place of healing every time we choose. And so we take this energy of meditation into humor and joy of our piece, our special music. And thank you. cell in my body is happy every little cell in my body is well every little cell in my body is happy every little cell in my body is well i'm so glad every little cell in my body is happy and well i'm so glad every little cell in my body is happy and well every little cell in my body is happy every little cell in my body is well Every little cell in my body is a cell, my body is a cell, my body is a cell. I'm so glad, I'm so sad, I'm so sad as my body is as well. I'm so glad, I'm so sad, I'm so sad as my body is as well. Please join me in prayer as we affirm our prayer of faith. God is my help in every need. God does my every hunger feed. God dwells within me, guides my way through every moment, night and day. I now am wise, I now am true, patient, kind, and loving too. All things I am can do and be through Christ, the truth that is in me. God is my health, I can't be sick. God is my strength, unfailing quick. God is my all, I know no fear, since God and love and truth are here. Amen. Our tithe recipient for this week is Unity of New Brownfields. And in this month of March, I know that my mentor minister, Reverend Gary, will be doing six straight days of interviews from I think eight in the morning till five in the afternoon. All of the people who do the interviews for the prospective uh, new ministers, ministers in training, they do all of this for free. So that they're taking time away from their own church and they, 
they don't get remuneration when it's live they don't get travel expenses they do it for the very joy of promoting the the movement and especially growing new ministers for unity and so we just hold this in our heart and we send this loving energy out to unity new brownfields blessing them prospering them and bringing in all of the abundance that comes from those divine ideas and knowing that this goes through unity new brownfields into the world and comes around in the lord's circulation and we say thank you welcome to unity of las cruces where we know that god is good all the time your love blessings can be made at the unity of las cruces website or on the weekly email you can mail your gift donation or tithe to the p.o box your gift is given love goes out to the others in love and love returns tenfold and so it is and we continue to be so grateful for all of the ways that you continue to tithe to unity of las cruces thank you and next week i'm Already looking forward to hearing those words of inspiration from Reverend Jennifer Kleitz as she talks about spiritual health. So this is our March Sunday speakers lineup and I get to come back at the end of the month, which will be after the, uni after the interviews for Unity Worldwide Ministries. So that will be good. Thank you. And I think I'm handing this over to Ken. Yes, thank you very much, Helen. Yeah, we're going to have our annual meeting right after this service. So be prepared to have a great time, learn some new information, and hopefully get some good information in your ears. Uh, hopefully you guys can all stick around for that. Thank you very much. I'm going to run into the next slide as well. The sacred service opportunities. We have lots of folks that we're looking to, we have lots of positions that we're hoping to get some folks to fill. Uh, so if you have an interest, uh, someone is leading you or, or guiding you to that, that desire to be an archivist or to be a li liaison representative, we have some great positions that we'd love to have you fill. Uh, we're also looking for some board members, and you're going to hear a little bit about more about that in a little bit. But I want to let you know that we have lots of opportunities for you to become a further member of the church and provide your, your donated time and resources to keeping us on the right track and keeping us above board. Thank you very much. Back to you, Helen. Thank you. We want to be kept above board, of course. So uh, our Daily Word on Wednesdays continues and uh, uh, just feel free to join us. Wednesdays, 9.30, and it is now a, a new um, ID that you can see at the bottom and, and the password is actually the same. So we're looking forward to joining. If you haven't been before, come and join us. We have a great time. And uh, a new book study is beginning March 15th. Would you like to speak to that, Reverend Jennifer? Yes, thank you, Reverend Helen. So we are uh, picking up the Unity book study that used to happen um, before uh, COVID. And uh, we're going to start off uh, March 15th at 9.30 a.m. It will be hybrid. It will be, uh, you can participate at the social hall uh, on 575 North Main Street, or you can uh, participate on Zoom. The meeting ID and the passcode is there. We're gonna start with the book, Divine Audacity by Linda Martella, what, Wids, Marcella Winsett. And uh, we're looking forward to having a lot of uh, people participating. I am uh, contributing uh, however many books um, that there will be, there will be a complimentary book given uh, of Div Divine Audacity to anyone who uh, joins the, our book study. So just uh, contact myself or email Unity of Las Cruces if you want any more information. And please tell your friends. Thank you. So we're continuing to accept um, generous uh, donations of, of cat and dog supplies for the action program for animals. And then we also have our continuing um, food barrels, which I think is on our next slide. Yep. 
So we, we're continuing to, to do the, the food and the uh, pads and ponds and getting those now to where they need to be. So thank you for the continued flow of generous donations. So thank you all for being here and it will continue, we will continue after the service with our annual meeting. So thank you all for being present for supporting Unity of Las Cruces and now we will hear um, our peace, a prayer for peace, prayer for protection and the peace song. Please join us as we affirm the prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. Amen. Let there be peace on earth and let it Thank you everyone. Let us go into this day, this week, this year with, with this release and renewal and with um, health, perfect health and with that peace that we radiate out into the world. Namaste.